Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is the last day of the month of November. Now, every first of the month, we normally have our fasting and prayer meeting. And we actually start 12 midnight today, 12 midnight on the last day of the month. And then we run throughout the following day. Now, in these meetings, we pray according to the watches. Now, when we say pray according to the watches, in case you've not heard me share or heard anyone talk about this before, we pray from 12 midnight, actually every three hours from 12 midnight today. So we're going to be praying at every watch for one hour. Now, this month, the Lord spoke to me that I should tell you this. Now, please take this message importantly. Then you're going to write down things that you desire of the Lord before the end of this year. Now, whatever, of course, you, you, you of course, when you're dealing with God, you better be serious. Praise God. So things that have been a challenge, things that you have desired, things that you wanted to see this year. And up till now, it's difficult or it's not just adding up. The Lord said this to you. If you will join us in this prayer, write those things down. And we are going to be praying in the Spirit at every watch for one hour. The kind of miracles that you're going to experience. And you see, when we pray according to the watches, we pray with expectations. And things that have been delayed, you will see them run to you. I've heard from the Lord and I'm so excited about this. So if you will join us, the Zoom link is on the screen because we're going to be meeting via Zoom. So you can join us at the comfort of your home, your office. But please plan for this. We're going to meet at 12 midnight, 3 a.m., 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., and then 6 p.m. And the last watch is 9 p.m. December is going to be an excellent month of miracles. We, as, I mean miracles. But you've got to get ready for it. And that's what we're going to be doing. And this is by the command of the Lord, this specific, this one specifically. Write the things you want to see or you have desired for the year 2023. Write it down. Don't just say, oh, I know it's in my head. Write it down. When you walk with God, you better follow instructions. Write it down. And copy the Zoom link that is or the Zoom um, address showing on the screen. Get the passcode. And 12 midnight today, we're going to start that prayer meeting. God is surely going to show up for you. I know that. Praise God. So plan for it. And let's meet at 12 tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now. Say, Father, I make demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we have been talking about believing in Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, what would you expect see please understand this we have not come to jesus like we have come to a god like like our ancient fathers who didn't know god did our coming to the lord is something that is real it's not an assumption it, our believing in Jesus is not an assumption. We don't hope, I, I hope I have believed though, so that on that day I will not be a castaway. No. 
You see, there are indications Jesus have given. I mean, that's what you know. That's how you know you're in the right track. If you don't see these things working in your life, you risk, you risk being thrown out on the last day. Oh, yes. You know, don't confuse yourself by thinking the later is what will save you. Oh, the Bible says, if, if, you, if, you, if you shall confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and, and believe in your heart that God raised him from there, you shall be saved. So someone say, I have confessed and I have believed, so I'm saved. No, sir. I, ta I tell you the truth, no. That's following the later. And the Bible actually says it kills. Now, Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit. The spirit is a being. See, if I come to your house and I interact with somebody, I've interacted with someone. I will quote the person. I will have a feeling. There's what the, 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 the actions of the person will give me a certain kind of feeling. I will leave that place knowing that, hey, I've learned something or I have been, I have been, I'm annoyed or have been excited, I'll leave that place with several emotions caused by that meeting with the person. So you can't come to Jesus and still remain the same. It is wrong. You didn't meet Jesus. You didn't meet Jesus. Because if you met Jesus, certain things must change in your life. How do you meet Jesus and still remain the same? How long have you been born again? Five years now. Oh, how did you get born again? Oh, one day my pastor was pro. I went to this program and I just felt, oh, it's time. Let me give my heart to Christ. And then now, so I went out for the altar call and then I gave my heart to Christ. Okay, so how has life been? Well, normal, normal. I just, I just feel in my heart that, that um, you know, I've, I've, I've tried to stop doing all the wrong, wrong things I used to do before. <laughs> See, this life is not a life of struggle. Jesus said, come, I will give you. So first you come. Next you receive what he gives you. He says, I will give you rest. Question then, have you received rest? If you haven't received rest, now, now, you're the only one that can answer that question. Have you received rest? Or are you still struggling? Are you still feeling the burdens of life? Jesus said, I will give you rest. It's one thing for him to give you rest. It's another thing for you to receive rest. So have you received rest? from him if you have received rest you will feel it in your life and it's not a is it the rest is not something you receive you say ah you know that time i got born again everything was just working out for me but you know as you grow life becomes difficult so in reality now dawns on you hey what's the reality the reality is that you are saved and you have come into a new kind of life. And in this new kind of life, we operate from a different system. We operate by a different spirit. And this spirit makes us superior to everything that life is going to throw at you. So Jesus listed out these things and said, this is how you will know those who have believed in me. Number one, in my name, they will cast out devils because they have received the authority to cast out devils. Then he says they shall speak with new tongues. I explained this to you. They will speak with new tongues. Now, speaking with new tongues means I have actually entered into the place of liberty. Nothing holds me. So first of all, authority to cast out deep demons. So nothing can hold you. Nothing can oppress you. He said, I don't understand. Every time I sleep in the night, something used to come and press me. That is wrong. And let me tell you the truth. Don't look for any pastor to help you. You wake up and say, it ends today. By the authority in the name of Jesus, 
every oppression of Satan ends in my life today. It's by authority that you do that. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by his authority. Then you find out that you've been you've received the liberty to speak with new tongues. So you flow with the Spirit. Hallelujah. And then next it says, you shall take up serpents. Now, taking up serpents, you know, it's not literally, you know, you know how we just oh, take up serpents, we'll go and pick snakes. And now imagine, imagine how, how Jesus is talking and what he's concerned about is you picking up serpents. As do the picking of serpents have something really, really to do with you being a champion. Think about it. Casting out devils, we know, is very important. Because demonic spirits are all around. And their job is to stop you. They will hinder you from fulfilling your destiny. So when Jesus said, you will cast them out. Now that's very, very important. Speaking with new tongues is very, very important. Because now you can speak the heavenly language. And what does that mean? You, I can actually say what God is saying right now. Oh, yes. Because the connection between me and God is the Holy Spirit. So he is the same one in God and he's the same one in me. So I can switch to his frequency and I begin to think and say exactly what God is thinking and saying right now. So that's very important. And he says they shall take up serpents. Now, where does this come in? So I'll go and look for serpent and say, oh, or maybe Jesus wants us to be doing a, you know, all those uh, magic they do on uh, at the market square. You know, we go and carry snakes and say, hey, everybody watch you. You know, now, come on now, praise God. Now that should tell you that Jesus meant something deeper than a physical snake. Now the, the, the Greek word that actually was used by Jesus when he said they shall take up serpents is a word called, a word called office. Now that actually means figuratively, using the serpent figuratively, it's sly, con people. Can you see that now? People who are slimy, you know, the they, 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 they deceivers, con men. Of course, come men, come women, praise God. So Jesus was saying, you will take up such people. So he wasn't referring to animals. He wasn't referring to um, um, snake. No, and he wasn't referring to animals. He was referring to con, sly people. People, and, and that's another kind of human beings that you will have to deal with living on earth. You find them everywhere. You find them amongst preachers. You find them amongst businessmen. You find them amongst everywhere you find calm people. You find them. So how, how come you fall victims to such people? How come you've been under the, the, the authority in terms of maybe a church or ministry of a con man? And you didn't know all this well. Hey, sisters, how come you've been dating this guy for four years now? And you didn't realize already that he's married with a family. How come you didn't know that this person for that long? How come you didn't know? He said, Jesus is concerned. And that's one of the benefits of believing in Jesus. You will not be fooled that way. No matter how they disguise, because Satan, the Bible says, Satan have disguised himself like, like an angel of light. But they see, by the Spirit of God, who will take him on, who will take them on. He says, they shall take up serpents. We shall take them on. Praise God. So, you know, you just know, you can't be deceived. You can't, you know, someone comes and displays and oh, oh, yeah, oh, wow, wow. You know, Jesus told us that we should expect these things to happen. You remember Jesus said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. Peter told us that in the last days, 
um, uh, Paul told us in the last days, perilous times will come. Peter told us that, look, there shall be false prophets, even as there shall be false teachers amongst you. Now, all these prophecies, he didn't say that God would stop them from coming. He never said that. But this is what he gave to you. He has given to you the ability to take them up. You can deal with them. You shouldn't be deceived. You shouldn't be led astray. You should be able to detect it. How? Because, now notice where you're coming from. You, you're speaking with new tongues now. So you see, this is what happens. No matter how one tries to deceive you, soon you begin to realize that your language and their language don't flow together. Now that's how you begin to know, except you choose to deceive yourself. You will begin to know that the, your both languages don't flow together because now you are receiving God's language and you are speaking it. And I've told you this before, when you speak in tongues, the next thing you should desire sincerely in your heart is the ability to interpret your own tongues. It's a desire you must have. So this is what's going to be happening to you. When you notice you're speaking with new tongues, then you will also notice that new ideas, because now this is, we, we speak in tongues by the Spirit of God. We don't speak in tongues with our mind. See? Now, the words we speak are impressions of the Spirit of God on our minds. But they are just impressions. But when you are calm and express your heart with this desire, soon those impressions will begin to add up to make meaning in your mind. So you're praying about something and suddenly you know that the Holy Spirit is giving you new vocabularies, new tongues. And now you, you begin to desire like, Lord, I know I'm saying something. Can, can, can you help me interpret this? Then words will begin to come in your own understanding. Ideas will begin to come in your own understanding. Now you've got to believe at such times that this is the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. And you accept him. He, he might begin to, he might lead you to somewhere new. He might lead you to, so he, that's how he works. Then you will realize that it's so easy to detect con men. People who are sly in their ways. You will detect them so easily. You will not fall prey. So someone comes with an exciting offer like, wow. And then you're excited. But you go back, you're praying, and then suddenly you just feel a detestful feeling concerning it. And suddenly the excitement just dies down. Then you, you decide to look at this thing again and soon you begin to discover lots of wrong things with it uh, i don't think i should invest in this i don't think i should get involved with this kind of thing or get involved with this kind of person now you know the next thing jesus said if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them now what's that nothing shall by any means hurt you that's not a promise for everyone. It's a promise for those who believe in Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, and live and walk by the Holy Ghost. You deal with con men, then nothing hurts you. Then now you are prepared for ministry, because the next thing he says, you stick this thing out now. And he says, you shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Now this is where you step out and begin to be useful to everyone around you. Now can you see that? Believing in Jesus makes you complete entirely and makes you useful to everyone around you. Every sick person needs healing and you are available to be the healing hand of God. Brothers and sisters, listen. If this is not the projection of your life, if this is not the activities taking place in your life, I am sorry to tell you this. 
And I'll tell you this truth so that you begin to think deeply about it. I don't think the Holy Spirit is working in your life. Because Jesus said he will take of mine and he will reveal it to you. Jesus told us what we should look out for when we preach the gospel to people. What does that mean? This is how to know a believer who has believed in Jesus Christ. These things he listed are things we should watch out for. So you ask yourself, where am I in this? If, if you don't see yourself functioning in this, you need to start sincerely seeking the Lord. I know my time is up, but let me tell you this again as a reminder. Please, join us tonight at 12 midnight West African time. Praise God. And write, the, write your prayer request, not just prayer requests for us to pray for you. Write, sit down, think about the year and the things you felt should have been accomplished this year. Okay? And write them one after the other. And when we meet at midnight, we're going to begin to pray together and see what God is going to do in your life. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow or 12 midnight today. Praise God. Bye.